Hey guys, just before the video starts, I want to give you all a quick epilepsy warning. Some of the spells shown in this video will flash a lot and make the screen flash. So, if you're sensitive to flashing lights or have photosensitive epilepsy or anything like that, this is your warning. Viewer discretion is advised. Enjoy the video. The Destruction School of Magic is the staple of the magic system in Skyrim. I mean, it's the best way to deliver direct damage to your opponent while still being a ton of fun to use. With a grand total of 29 spells, the Destruction School of Magic surely has its great spells and awful ones alike. Let's rank them all so that we can clearly define what makes the School of Magic so special. For this video, I'm going to rank these spells on a few factors. Damage output is the first one. How efficiently can you utterly melt the enemies in front of you? Versatility is another one. Can you use this spell in many situations rather than just one or two? And lastly, practicality will also factor into these rankings. A spell that is easy to use in most fights will rank better on this list. Other things like magicka cost, charge time, and the level you can acquire these spells at will factor into the rankings as well. Like always, these lists can be pretty subjective, so make sure to comment down below if you think any changes should be made to this list. As always, make sure to be respectful. Starting at number 29, Arnold's Convection deals a grand total of 1 damage per second. Yep, that's it. The only reason to even consider learning the spell is because it costs zero magicka. After realizing that, you would think it would be a great last resort spell. However, if you find yourself relying on Arnold's Convection, you've probably already lost the fight. Instead of wasting your time with the spell, it would be a lot better to use a last resort melee weapon instead. If you still want the fire effect, you can just apply an enchantment to that weapon too. In my opinion, there aren't really any real reasons to use Arnell's Convection. If you didn't know, shock spells will reduce an enemy's magicka along with their health. This makes them super effective against mages. However, most mages have a pretty passive AI, which forces you to play very aggressive in order to actually damage them with this spell. This can just get you killed in most encounters with mages, because they'll usually have a high damage output and they will mow you down. The damage is also pretty pathetic, considering it's high magic at cost and that it's an adept level spell. There are just a lot of better options to deal with mages than using Lightning Cloak. Shock Rune shares a lot of the same problems that Lightning Cloak does. A short range, high cost lightning spell that doesn't do a very good job of what it's supposed to do. Because typically, Mage AI in this game is passive, Shock Rune requires you to be very aggressive for it to be used correctly. It can end up getting you killed against higher level enemies. In situations against non-magic enemies, both Frost and Fire Rune are going to be much better options because they're more cost effective. At number 26 we have Wall of Storms. This placement was decided for similar reasons of those that Shock Rune and Lightning Cloak were. I think you guys get the message by now. There are just a lot of better, safer ways to deal with magic wielding enemies in battle. I do think that is slightly more versatile than the other two though. At number 25, we have Vampiric Drain. Vampiric Drain can only be accessed if you are, well, a vampire. In most situations, I'd rather use a more powerful damage spell, such as Flames or Frostbite, along with a separate healing spell, instead of using Vampiric Drain. In a lot of situations, the extra health you get from Vampiric Drain isn't necessary, so you'd be better off spending more Magicka on more powerful spells. At number 24, we have Frost Cloak. The real problem with Frost Cloak is its versatility and its damage output. Cloak spells in general are only useful when you're being attacked by melee enemies. However, these spells do less damage than the novice level spells. It also doesn't help when most melee human enemies are Nords, who in turn have a 50% resistance to Frost.
At number 23, we have Flame Cloak. Again, this placement was made for pretty much the same exact reasons why Frost Cloak was this low. Lack of versatility. It's better than the Frost one because it's more cost efficient and that there are fewer enemies who are resistant to fire. All in all, the Cloak spells are, are right for throwing on an addition to the many other spells that you will use in a fight, but as a standalone spell, it sucks. Coming in at number 22, we have Frost Rune. If you've seen my other videos, you would know that I absolutely despise rune spells. They are just so annoying because you have to rely on the enemy AI in order for them to be triggered, which isn't very convenient. I think in more situations, Frost Storm is just going to be better. At number 21, we have Blizzard. There are so many other options that are just better than Blizzard. Its main downside is its awful charge time and the fact that it deals damage over time rather than a single blast of damage. It can also hinder your eyesight once casted. It can work wonders against large amounts of enemies, but there are plenty of other spells that can already do that better, especially since this is the master spell. Number 20, we have Fire Rune. I guess you can go check out number 23 on this list for similar reasoning behind this ranking. I don't like runes. I think that this spell is better than Frost Rune because of its lower cost and the fact that many enemies are weak to fire, and there are more enemies that are resistant to frost than there are to fire. At number 19, we have Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm can be a very powerful spell against single boss fights, but it has so many problems. For one, you can't move while you cast it, which means you'll be vulnerable to ranged attacks. This also means you'll have to go through the painfully long casting time every time you want to move locations. You can only target enemies once at a time, and if you have a hard time tracking enemies, you're going to waste a lot of magicka. To top it off, it can be difficult to see who you're actually shooting it at. Again, this spell can be great against single bosses, but has a lot of issues that makes it difficult to use. Coming in at number 18, we have Sparks. Sparks is this far back on the list for similar reasons as Shock Rune and Wall of Storms. However, the best thing about the spell is that you can unlock it before you even leave Helgen. You can find the spell tome in Helgen, in the Torturer's Room, in one of the locked cages right next to the mage. Still, I think that Sparks becomes pretty irrelevant once you unlock Lightning Bolt. Coming in at number 17, we have Firestorm. Firestorm can be a great crowd control spell. But like with Blizzard, it's outclassed by a lot of other spells. The charge time makes it really hard to use while engaging multiple melee enemies because you can be easily staggered out of the animation. Also, the actual damage of the spell isn't really worth the magic investment. At number 16, we have Frostbite. Frostbite is a solid early game spell, but it eventually gets outshined by the Apprentice level spells. Flames is just going to be a lot better spell in most situations, especially in the early game. Also, unlike Flames and Sparks, you're going to have to spend gold out of vendor to acquire Frostbite in the early game, when money is pretty scarce. Number 15, we have Wall of Frost. The only problem with Wall of Frost is that it can't be used in every situation. It can't be used if enemies are sniping you from afar. It can also be hard to use while enemies are right in your face too. It can work wonders if you can react fast enough and get melee enemies to walk right over it. Wall of Frost is simply worse than Wall of Flames, mostly because of the resistances that I've already talked about in this video. Wall of Frost is also more expensive, magic speaking, than Wall of Flames is.
Sliding in at number 14, we have Wall of Flames. Now, Wall of Flames is placed here for similar reasons as Wall of Frost was. It's just better because there are fewer enemies with fire resistance than there are for frost resistance. Again, I would like to reiterate how expensive these wall spells are. Also remember that they aren't very versatile, but they are powerful if used correctly. Coming in at number 13, we have Flames. Flames is the best novice spell in my opinion. For one, it's the only spell in the game that is actually given to the player at the start of the game, no matter what race they chose. It's actually super good in the early game too. It'll melt mostly everything that you encounter in the first 10 levels or so. After that, it becomes pretty obsolete. Enemies will be a lot tougher, and you'll likely have found a lot more exciting and effective destruction spells later in the game. Still, Flames is really good for those early game encounters. Number 12, we have Icy Spear. Icy Spear isn't as cost effective as casting multiple shots of Ice Spike, but it does have some benefits. First of all, when dual casted, every enemy can be affected by the impact perk, despite the size or level of the enemy. Unless you need to do more damage in a shorter amount of time, in most cases, Ice Spike is going to be more cost efficient than Ice Spear, but it's still a solid spell for most encounters in the game. At number 11, we have Whirlwind Cloak. I want to start off by saying this spell is a lot of fun. Tossing your enemies like a salad in front of you is really fun. However, it's not very practical for some character builds. The problem is that it costs a lot of magicka for something that doesn't really deal that much damage. It also knocks people back completely on chance, and you have to rely on that when using the spell. It might work with a spell sword if this is the only spell you need, but for full on mage characters, you may need to use that magic up for more offensive spells instead. Still, a super fun spell to play around with. Sliding into number 10, we have Incinerate. Incinerate is similar to Icy Spear, as it's a more powerful version of its apprentice spell. In this case, Fireball. It's a good spell, but it's not as cost effective as just spamming Fireball instead. The slow projectile speed can lead you to miss a few shots, which would waste a lot of magicka. Overall, it's a solid spell, but there are just a lot of better options. At number 9, we have Ignite. Ignite is a really good damage over time spell in the game. It costs less than Firebolt, but does a lot more damage in total. You might be asking, what's the catch? The catch is that you must wear Azadol's Ring of Arcana in order to actually be able to use this spell. You can find this ring in Solstheim at Kolbjorn Barrow, just southeast of Ravenrock. The problem with this is that in order to use this spell, you have to take up a ring spot that could be used for something else like Extra Magicka or Fortify Destruction. Sliding into number 8, we have Ice Spike. Ice Spike is reliable, does a lot of damage, has a relatively low magicka cost, and is easily spammable. The only problem is, is of the resistances mentioned earlier in the video, and the annoyingly slow travel time the spell has. Other than that though, it's a great option for both middle and early game. At number 7 we have Firebolt. Firebolt's only problem is the slow travel time, which can make it really annoying to use at a longer range. Still, it manages to check off all the boxes that make a spell really good. Number 6, Lightning Bolt. Unlike the previous two spots, this spell has an instant travel time. This gives the spell an advantage because you don't have to lead your shots with the spell. Still, while the damage output is solid, 
The next spells on this list will do a better job of killing your enemies quicker. Starting with our top 5, we have Ice Storm. Ice Storm is a really good spell for clearing out multiple enemies that are all grouped up together. It has a large hitbox while doing a lot of damage as it glides through the air. However, it has a painfully slow travel time and a somewhat limited range. Still, with a few casts of the spell, you can absolutely obliterate any horde of enemies that cross your path. At number 4 we have Freeze. Normally when you use ice spells, you have to hit the enemy a lot for them to actually be slowed. However, when you use Freeze, the enemies become instantly slowed down whenever you hit them even once. It's a great spell, but just like Ignite, you have to wear Azadol's Ring of Arcana in order to use it. At number 3 we have Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is simply the best spell in the game to kill mages with. Mage enemies in Skyrim have the ability to rack up a lot of damage on you in an incredibly short amount of time, so it's important to kill them quickly. Thunderbolt does just that. Sliding into number 2, we have Fireball. Fireball is my personal favorite spell in this school of magic. It's just so satisfying to wipe out a group of bandits in mere seconds with the spell. It's reliable, versatile, and it does a lot of damage. What more is there to say about the staple of the destruction school of magic? At number 1, we have Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning is just the most versatile spell on this list. You really can't go wrong with using Chain Lightning in any situation you find yourself in. With the Augmented Lightning perk, Chain Lightning can jump to a third enemy while still dealing a great amount of damage per jump. This is definitely the best destruction spell in my opinion because it's great against most enemies in the game. Testing out all the great spells for this video was certainly a lot of fun. I hadn't actually used this spell type in a long time, so it was an absolute blast to go back and try them out again. I think I'll definitely make a destruction based mage playthrough sometime in the future. Alright guys, that's all I have for you today. If you've enjoyed the video or perhaps learned something new, feel free to like the video. I'll be making Skyrim content just like this, so if you want to see more of this content, consider subscribing so that you won't miss future uploads. Also, comment down below if you think any changes should be made to this list. I can't wait to read your responses. As always, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.